Bleak new estimates in drug epidemic, a record 72,000 overdose deaths in 2017. Fentanyl is a big culprit, but there are also encouraging signs from states that have prioritized public health campaigns and addiction treatment. Drug overdoses killed about 72,000 Americans last year, a record number that reflects a rise of about 10%, according to a new preliminary estimate from the Centers for Disease Control. The death toll is higher than the peak yearly deaths from HIV, car crashes, or gun deaths. Analysts pointed to two major reasons for the increase. A growing number of Americans are using opioids and drugs are becoming more deadly. It is the second factor that most likely explains the bulk of increased number of overdoses last year. The picture is not equally bleak everywhere. In parts of New England, where a more dangerous drug supply arrived early, the number of overdoses has begun to fall. That was the case in Massachusetts, Vermont, Rhode Island. Each state has had a major public health campaign and has increased addiction treatment. Preliminary 2018 numbers from Massachusetts suggest that the death rate there may be continuing to fall. But nationwide, the crisis worsened in the first year of the Trump presidency, a continuation of a long-term trend. During 2017, the president declared the opioid crisis a national public health emergency and states began tapping a $1 billion grant program to help fight the problem. Because it's a drug epidemic that, as opposed to an infectious disease epidemic like Zika, the response is slower, said Dan Cicerone, a professor of family and community medicine at the University of California, San Francisco. I actually played a video of Dan Cicerone talking about this, who studies heroin markets. Because of the forces of stigma, the population is reluctant to seek care. I wouldn't expect a rapid downturn. I would expect a slow, smooth downturn. A large government telephone survey suggests that around 2.1 million Americans had opioid use disorders in 2016, but that number may be an undercount because not all drug users have telephones, and some may not mention their drug use because of the stigma, Dr. Cicerone said. The real number could be as high as 4 million. Wow, it's a lot. Actually, not really. The, the number of opioid users has been going up in most places, but not at this exponential rate, said Brandon Marshall, an associate professor of epidemiology at Brown University School of Public Health. The dominant factor is the changing drug supply. Strong synthetic opioids like fentanyl and its analogs have become mixed into black market supplies of heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine, and the class of anti-anxiety medicine known as Benzodiazepines. Unlike heroin, which is derived from poppy plants, fentanyl can be manufactured in a laboratory and is often easier to transport because it is more concentrated. Unexpected combination of those drugs can overwhelm even experienced drug users. In some places, the type of synthetic drugs mixed into heroin changes often, increasing the risk for users. While the opioid epidemic was originally concentrated in rural white populations, the death toll has become more widespread. The pen penetration of fentanyl into more heroin markets may explain recent increases in overdoses among older urban black Americans. Those who use heroin before the recent change to the drug supply might be unprepared for the strength of the new mixtures. Even when you think you're doing better, all it takes is one bad batch of fentanyl in any state and you're going to have deaths, said Mark Levine, a physician and the health commissioner of Vermont, which has made major investments in addiction treatment, but still experienced a spike in deaths in 2016. Last year, deaths fell slightly there. According to the CDC estimates, overdose deaths involving synthetic opioids rose sharply, while deaths from heroin, prescription opioids, and pills and methadones fell. In much of the West, overdose deaths have been flatter as the epidemic has raged in parts of the East and Midwest. The geographical pattern may be a result of the drug supply. Heroin sold west of the Mississippi teen, tends to be processed into a form known as black tar that is difficult to mix with synthetic drugs. Okay, that's good to know. 
The heroin sold toward the east is more processed white powder that is more easily combined with fentanyls. Overdose deaths rose sharply in several mid-Atlantic, midwestern states, in Ohio, Indiana, and West Virginia, where the opioid death rate has been high for years. Opioid deaths increased by more than 17% in each state. In New Jersey, they rose 27%. The CDC numbers for 2017 are an estimate, not a final count. The federal government collects death records from states throughout the year, but some deaths can take longer to investigate than others. The CDC adjusts early numbers based on the number of deaths still under investigation by assuming a predictable proportion of them will turn out to be drug overdoses based on past experience. Using deaths that are confirmed, the agency measured a 10% increase in overdose deaths between 2016 and 2017. Using adjusted data, the increase was 9.5%. There are reasons for optimism that the recent increases in overdose deaths will not continue. The monthly CDC numbers suggest that deaths might have begun leveling off by the end of the year. Continuing funding may help more states develop the kind of public health programs that appear to have help in New England. There's a lot of money going into the system, and it takes some time for this to translate into new infrastructure, said Chris Jones, the director of National Mental Health and Substance Use Policy Laboratory. That's particularly true for places where it's wasn't already there. In Dayton, Ohio, a hot spot for the epidemic, public health officials are seeing signs of progress after instituting a new emergency response strategy. Drawing from the new federal and state grant funds, the health department has documented reductions in overdose deaths, emergency room visits, and ambulance calls of more than 60% between January 2017 and June of this year. The county has reduced medical opioid prescribing, increased addiction treatment resources, and expanded community access to an anti-overdose drug called naloxone naloxone, and provided addiction treatment to prisoners in its county jails. Among other measures, Barbara Marsh, the assistant to the Dayton and Montgomery County Health Commissioner, says she hopes the trend will hold and provide some lessons for other parts of the state. It's definitely wait and see, she said. We want to continue seeing a decline. Congress is debating a variety of bills to fight the epidemic. Many of the measures which have passed the House but not have reached the Senate floor are focused on reducing medical prescriptions of opioids, which are meant to reduce the number of new drug users. But the package also includes measures that could expand treatment for people who already use opioids. The epidemic could also intensify again. One worrying sign, Dr. Jones said, is some early evidence that drug distributors are finding ways to mix fentanyl with black tar heroin, which could increase deaths in the West. If that becomes more widespread, the overdose rates in the West could explode as they have in parts of the East. Now, that's a long one. But I told you that this opioid epidemic in crisis is going to be a hard one to fight. And it probably will increase. And I do believe 2018 will be more deaths than there was in 2017. I don't think you quite you've quite seen the peak. But we'll see. Even at that, you're going to have a, a, a slow, steady drop off. I think the only reason that the deaths are down is because um, they're producing the antidote a lot more and they're actually selling it across the counter so addicts can actually buy it. So that keeps the number of the deaths down. I would love to see what the overdose numbers are because last I saw, I think it was 2016, the, the only one in five overdoses actually died. So if there's 72,000 deaths, even with uh, increased naloxone, that means that you probably have two, at least 250,000 to over 350,000 um, overdoses, which means there's a big increase in the use of the drug. Uh, President Trump being slow on the, on the draw to actually implement any safeguards, and um, I do believe that uh, 
Obama was no better as far as this is concerned. Um, I can't help but think there is a little of uh, turning a blind eye to uh, middle America and white America on this. Whereas the crack cocaine trade had very little, very few deaths as compared to this. But I think the difference is, is that the drug is so cheap, so cheap to produce and so cheap to print transport because it's so concentrated. There's not a whole lot of money in this uh, heroin because the opioids have made uh, heroin high so cheap. And sometimes I think that's intentional, but we're not going to even get into that. But uh, this is just an update on the opioids. I'm actually going to do more on it because I got tons of this stuff. Oh, I mean, do mean tons of this stuff. I got uh, a few people sending me the opioid news stories. I appreciate that. I'm going to try to catch up with it because it is important because, you know, you got, you know, you got upwards of almost 100,000 people a year dying from this stuff and just on overdoses. So we're not even talking about the, the junkies that are strung out on it that cause problems because there's other stories about uh, white females uh, being um, given birth to well, what they what they're calling now opioid babies. Remember crack babies of the eighties and nineties. Now you have opioid babies of the of the two thousands and the teens. So it's kind of a, a reversal of fortunes. In fact, I'm going to read another blog post by a black dude that talks about the uh, role reversals between the uh, crack cocaine epidemic and the opioid epidemic. I'm sure Tareen will actually love for me to read this, but. I'll read that a little later, but with that, I'm going to jump off of here. This is BGS out, and I will see you guys on the next one.